Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Tokyo Ghoul. When you say Tokyo, you have to emphasize it. Tokyo, Tokyo Ghoul. Episode 2 review. Is that offensive? Perhaps, maybe, possibly, there's a chance it might offend someone out there on the world, on planet Earth, but it's funny. So let it slide. It's funny, okay? At least I think it's funny. That's the way I operate. And if you don't like the way I operate, get the fuck out of my clinic. That's just the way I roll. So that being said, once again, Tokyo Ghoul, episode 2, review. Now, I can't give you guys a link, obviously, because it's not on Crunchyroll, so you guys are on your own. Your favorite search engine, Google, Bing, Yahoo, and then just fly. So... Let me start off like this. What Kaneki did to Nishio, I was like, yo, dog. <laughs> and what threw me off was it wasn't like the attack itself. Because the moment, and I think it's called a Kagune. The moment Kaneki's Kagune, which is technically Rize's Kagune. And I think in episode one, when we see Rize, she had two or four or, I forgot what number she had, but she had, yeah, I want to say two. And now, I think he has three. So, he got an extra one, like an, an extra tentacle, whatever. All right, Kagu ne. But, thing here is that, what, what really surprised me in that scene, in the episode, wasn't the initial strike itself. It was Nishio's reaction, where he got penetrated. And that sounds, that sounds kind of weird, but moving on. He got penetrated, and then... It, he gets blasted up into the air, and the strikes continue, and he's like, stop, stop, I'm dying, and then he keeps on saying dying, and the way it's Japanese, it's like, shinu, so he's like, shinu, 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 as his body's gyrating, and the blood's everywhere, and then finally, the kagune of Kaneki, like, takes freaking Nishio, and just swings him around, he just, yeah. I'm like, what the? Swings this dude around and slams it right into a guardrail above the bridge. And his head's just stuck there. I'm like, yo. Yo, that was some crazy shit. That was, that, that was like, whoa. Now, what I will say, though, is that I can see this being an issue later on. Because not only did it happen at the beginning but also in the scene, the censorship. The censorship is, I'm not gonna lie, a tad bit annoying. Like, it centers more than JoJo's, and granted, there's more gore, obviously, but it's like, just straight up black. Like, that's the way they choose to operate when it comes to the censorship. And, well, it was black at the beginning. And that was because you had Toka, she was throwing around body parts, and then she was flinging them towards Kaneki, and Kaneki was freaking the fuck out, like, Aah! and, you know, he, obviously, a very traumatic situation, because he's part ghoul, or he has ghoul organs, but when it came to the Nishio scene, even though it was cool, and it was crazy, how Kaneki was going ham, the problem here was that it was, like, white and blue, I'm like, like, they just come, they, they, completely shift the contrast as a means of censorship. I, I don't like that. Like, I'm not a fan of that. It's a cool scene, but it would be so much cooler. It would be way more epic if they just didn't do that. And I would figure that Tokyo Ghoul is in a time slot where they wouldn't censor the actual content at hand. But apparently not. I mean, apparently, it's like, I don't know what's happened over the course of the past few years or decades... But if you want to go back to old school anime, like the old, like for example, all right, old school Hunter x Hunter, 1999, they, uh, very well-known scene, Killua, main, uh, one of the main characters, takes out this dude's heart. You see the fucking heart. You see the heart, and you see him just crush that shit in his hands. But in the remake of the anime in the, tw in the 2011 uh, Hunter x Hunter, it's like in a doggy bag, the heart. So, over the course of the years, I've noticed how, like, censorship has, it's more prominent. 
it's more prominent and it bugs the fuck out of me. It real I'm not gonna lie to you. I, it really does. It's so fucking irritating. So that scene, I think it's a great scene, but it could have been something really monumental had they actually not censor it. And I would figure that again, because it's in a certain time slot where because time slots matter a lot. Whether it be in the morning where the kids see it or like late at night, like Adult swim time over here. So again, it matters, and I figured that because it would be like a late night time slot, they would they wouldn't censor it. But apparently, they censored it pretty heavy. So to me, it's some bullshit. Moving on, the main thing here. Well, so let me go back to the basics. Uh, when it comes to the pacing, you know, the pacing was fairly good. When it comes to story progression, that, that's the main part here. The story progression is this: you have finally, all right, finally, Kaneki coming to the realization that his life is permanently changed. Now, he doesn't know yet, but the people at Anteku, meaning the old guy and Toka, they know that he has ghoul organs. And it's it's affecting him, it may be changing him permanently, we don't know, he may be special in some way, shape, or form, but right now, he is between the realm of human and ghoul. In a sense, he is both human and ghoul. And... He has to adapt to his way of his new way of life. And at the end of the episode, after you have Toka stop him from eating Hide. Because after he takes out Nishio, all of a sudden in comes like the Rize, like I guess like her essence or her imitation inside of his own mind. And it's completely taking over him. And he wants to just consume Hide as a special reward. But God thank you, in comes Toka. And Toka, she's there to stop him and shut him down. And we have the old guy. And he's basically saying, okay, so you're in both worlds, but you still have to adapt to the ghoul world. Let me teach you how. Let me bring you in. So that's the way things are rolling right now. And it looks like he's going to start to learn the at least the basics of what it means to be a ghoul. And it ends off with these guys, like, like just some dudes on like top of a skyscraper, or I don't know, like just dudes, right? These dudes in jackets, and it's raining. And I think that uh, maybe they're not called this, probably not, but for now, I'm gonna call them ghoul hunters. Like that's the way they seem. They seem like ghoul hunters, all right? So I don't know. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the main points and story progression. And whether or not Nishio's dead, I don't know. I would figure Nishio's still alive, but he's heavily wounded. That's my assumption. But if he's dead, then that's pretty surprising, because I'd figure that given the opening, because there is an opening this time, given the opening, I would figure that Nishio would actually be like a main player later on in the story. That's what I figure. So if he's actually dead, I'm surprised. If he's not dead, then it makes sense to me. So, moving on. When it comes to the character development, and here's also very important stuff, too. First of all, we find out something about Hide. Hide, the best friend of Kaneki, he's actually very perceptive, right? Perceptive in weird ways. So, like, I have a feeling that Hide may be, or he may, either he may join, or he is a part of, like, the Ghoul Hunters. Now, maybe that's, an, that's a brash assumption at this point in time, but I can see it happening. And Hide... Even though in episode one, he comes off like someone who's very brazen, who is, who's not that intelligent, the fact of the matter is that he is. He's very intelligent, he's very perceptive. It was actually showcased at the end of the episode where the old man and Kaneki believe that he's asleep while they're talking about him being a ghoul and him not wanting to eat Hide. And how to change and, you know, how to learn how to make coffee. Because apparently, ghouls can actually consume coffee. Which threw me the fuck off. I'm like, wait a second, hold on. What? Like, coffee. Fuck it. Out of all of... Well, I mean, maybe there's more stuff out there that they can consume. At least drink. But, like, I don't know if they can drink orange juice, apple juice. I have no idea. But, apparently, ghouls... They can consume coffee. The last thing he says to Kaneki is, let me teach you how to make a good cup of coffee. And they close the door. You can see that Hide's awake. 
So he ain't heard that shit. So he they now knows. He now knows that his best friend, his might, his boy, his brother, is a ghoul. So, at least part ghoul. So, how this plays out with their friendship, don't know. Hide may be very accepting of that, or he may at least appear to be accepting of that, but then later on, he's not. Again, who knows how that plays out. But overall, what I will say is that it's fascinating, because now you have the situation where at the beginning of the episode, and towards the end of last episode, clearly Kaneki still suffering from the traumatic experience and this permanent life-altering experience where he has to now consume human flesh and he can no longer enjoy the food that he used to consume. And a very important part is Toka, where Toka, and this ties into her character development as well, Toka has character development where she's basically saying, okay, so look at your end. In your end, your life now sucks. What about me? I was... Uh, I I guess she was born this way. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be born a ghoul. I'm assuming that's how ghouls are normally... That's how ghouls normally come to existence. They are born. Kaneki's an exception because he had ghoul organs transplanted inside of him. But I'm assuming that normally ghouls are born through regular reproduction. Either... I, I mean, whether or not ghouls can be birthed to strictly ghoul parents or a ghoul parent and a regular human parent? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. Like, for example, if it's a human regular male and a ghoul female, because she's a ghoul female, is that trait dominant? And therefore, their kid's going to be a ghoul. Don't know. No idea. But the point here is this. She's explaining how well, I want to know how cake tastes. I want to know what it feels like to just lead a normal life. To not have to worry about other ghouls or the CCG, I think it's called. So, what does that mean for me? If your life sucks now, that means that my life has sucked since Jump Street. So, and that's a very important C when it comes from our understanding of her as a character. Because she's not just like a hardcore ghoul. She's a girl. She's a girl who has grown up in this environment because she had no other choice to. That's the way her life has led. And now we're starting to see just... Because we right now we've seen the bad side of ghouls. We've seen Rize just consuming ghouls. Apparently there was another guy called Jason. Fucking Voorhees over here with the goddamn mask and shit. What the fucking Voorhees? But like, yeah, like he was the one with the uh, crowbar. Or not crowbar, um... Well, the wretch. So, Voorhees apparently probably is a ghoul too. I think. Even though we never saw his eyes turn red, I think. And then you have guys like Nishio, who is, uh, he comes out, he comes off the gate, kicking dudes' heads off. Like, aww, kick. And he's clearly someone who's not right up here, even for a ghoul. He's clearly abnormal. So, We've seen the bad side of ghouls for the majority of the series so far, meaning two episodes. But now it looks like we're going to see the good side. And that comes from Anteku and mainly Toka herself. And it ends off with her butterfly finger. That's a pretty lovely scene right there. So overall, the episode, I think it was great. Uh, good plus to great. And I'll leave it at that. So King Lightning, be sure to, of course, rate the video, comment, subscribe, give me your thoughts. What do you think? Now Kaneki is going to full-on venture off into the world of ghouls and learn what it means to be a ghoul and seeing him adapt to this new way of life while at the same time probably trying to maintain his old way of life is going to be fascinating as well. So I'm done. King Lightning, rate the video, comment, subscribe. Have a nice day.